GNOME 47 is right around the corner and it comes with a lot of new features. Some more obvious, some more hidden. But it's a big one for the desktop environment itself and they can deliver improvements to the streamlined experience that it already is. So today we're going to take a look at some of the most exciting changes in GNOME 47, starting from improved customization to easier accessibility and general improvements for a lot of parts in the desktop. Let's get straight into it. One of the main focus points of GNOME 47 is of course the introduction of natively supported accent colors. This is a feature that has already been a thing on Ubuntu since 22.04, but is now also finally integrated into the GNOME desktop environment itself. You get to choose between 9 predefined colors that change the color scheme of action elements like buttons, sliders and similar, the appearance of highlights like in the calendar app and of course the quick menu. What it doesn't change however is the appearance of the folder icons in the file manager, but it's also something that can always be added later down the line. It would have also been nice to have a completely customizable color adjustment, though given the problems that I had with Cosmic, it makes sense to only allow for a few combinations right now. Moving on to some more settings that changed. The OneDrive integration for school and business accounts has been made more easier to understand, since before it wasn't really clear if the additional information here was required to fill out. There is a new accessibility setting in pointing and clicking, whereas a window becomes active as soon as you hover your mouse over it and the dialog for adding new users has also been more streamlined. Some distributions like Fedora now seem to ship with fractional scaling enabled by default, while the issue with some applications that still run on XWayland being blurry should now also be fixed. For distributions that don't ship with fractional scaling support, it should also be noted that the GNOME shell now scales better on smaller displays in general, so we get improvements all the way here. From the settings side, this was essentially everything. If I missed something, then please let me know in the comments down below. Moving on to a new topic, GNOME's file manager Nautilus has received a couple of important changes. For starters, the navigation bar has changed completely. There is a new network section which replaces the previously used other locations for mounting network resources, which is nice in terms of visuals and clarity, but you also lose the option to directly access your root directory. Now since GNOME already made the top bar clickable by default back in GNOME 46, I actually find this more suited for most users since you usually shouldn't poke around in the root directory anyway. If you have more than one disk in your system, the Nautilus now also displays them in the sidebar by default. You can however deactivate this behavior in the mount options when editing the partition with GNOME disks. One big change that was being discussed for a while is that the directory shortcuts for common locations have been moved down to the bookmarks and are now completely customizable. I'm personally not sure how I feel about that since it's kind of awesome that you get that control, but a user could also quite easily mess that up. Maybe a toggle for enabling each option in the settings would be more sufficient, but that's just shower thoughts. One thing that still hasn't been fixed however is that network share bookmarks get a double entry in the sidebar when the share is mounted. There is an open issue or even merge request somewhere out there, but for me I feel like disks and shares should belong together since everything is just storage essentially. Another important change in GNOME 47 is that the file chooser is now properly integrated with Nautilus, which means a lot of improvements in terms of visuals, but also a fix for a personal annoyance of mine, whereas Firefox didn't respect my bookmarks. With the new file chooser this is no longer an issue and I can finally access my drives and shares without first going to other locations, which happened more times than you might think. This release of GNOME also sees a lot of improvements and fixes to drag and drop support, especially when moving items between X11 and Wayland clients. The cursor smoothness has been improved under load and legacy applications that request server-side window decorations should now also default to libadvita. This is a change that could mess with a lot of GDK3 themes, but it also helps to provide a more streamlined experience for everyone in general. Now I personally don't mind Libetweiter since I don't find it ugly, but if you're someone who is heavy into theming then this change might not be quite to your taste. Another improvement can be found when dealing with video content or screencasting, since color conversion in video playback is now offloaded to specialized hardware whereas available. This can help to improve performance in video projects but also when recording your screen with the inbuilt screen recorder. 
There is also a lot of progress in enabling HDR and an experimental color management protocol has just been merged. But I unfortunately cannot really test anything because I currently have no way to connect my PC to an HDR capable display. Oh well, it's coming. In regards to gaming, many should be happy to hear that the DRM lease protocol is now finally implemented, which means that VR headsets should now be able to properly display their content. It sure took a while, but VR is now finally working on GNOME with Wayland. Now unfortunately, the merge request that allows for tearing in games for lower latency didn't make it in time and the variable refresh rate settings are still behind an experimental flag. But overall speaking and how it feels, GNOME is in a pretty great spot for gaming now. Like it works, what else can I say? Some final words on GNOME 47 are of course the redesign of the GNOME Discs app, which might or might not land in the next release of Fedora and Ubuntu, and the new terminal, which also has some color feedback. The new video and music players, Showtime and Decibels are well in the works and might also replace their older counterparts really soon. And that's it for now. Of course, there are many more improvements to the desktop environment that I simply couldn't put in this video. For example, I completely skipped over the new lock screen with better notifications, the introduction of persistent remote login sessions, the improved monitor matching and restoring of windows when reconnecting your PC or laptop to multiple monitors and so on. Behind the hood, GNOME 47 is one of the best releases to date. It focuses mainly on improving the already existing user experience by refining settings and window elements. It improves performance wherever possible, while also fixing a lot of old issues. While GNOME is of course still GNOME, that still has its fair share of small annoyances, like still not allowing to properly interact with background apps, I would say that GNOME 47 is still a huge release and I want to congratulate the GNOME team for what they have pulled off here. So what do you think of GNOME 47? Are there any things I missed or that you wished were in this release? And please don't say triple buffering. I know. Anyway, please let us know in the comment section below. Before I end this video, I quickly wanted to mention that if you want to support the channel make even better videos, then please feel free to check out our membership program as well as our online shop, whereas each sale helps to fund various open source projects. If you've liked this video, then please make sure to show it with a like and also subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on any future videos. Thank you so much for watching and all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening wherever you are. I'll see you around.